Oh my god. There's fruit. Over. Oh hi! Excuse me, eat some dried fruit. So today we're talking about preservation of organic materials. Last week I touched on it a little bit with the formation processes and I wanted to get a little bit further into detail with you about how organic materials actually survive through the archaeological record. And what better way to do that than with fruit? I've got the three main types of preservation in fruit form. Essentially this video is just going to be me eating at you while talking. So sorry, not sorry. Humans figured out this whole preservation thing millennia ago and it's helped us to thrive and survive on limited food sources. But preservation on organic material also happens naturally under similarly extreme conditions. And that is how we have most of our organic archaeological finds today. By climate or even just luck, cultural objects have found themselves in optimal preservation conditions, giving us the opportunity to find them and, and learn from them. I want to essentially dub this video how to plan your burial, because these are your best bets for keeping your body fresh to death as long as possible. If you've watched my formation video, you'll understand that these are end transformations. If you haven't watched my formation processes video, you need to question what you're doing with your life and click on the link in the description. Educate yourself. There are three main methods of preservation in regards to organic materials. You've got wet, dry, and cold preservation. Makes sense, right? So, we're talking about dry environment. And I've got dried fruit. This was my morning. Dehydrating apples. But apples, bananas, strawberries, I'm set. I'm sunshine, so this works really well for me. Dry environments lack water, which prevents all the icky microorganisms and bacteria from growing and feeding off dead material. For example, we've got wood. Things love to grow on wood. The biggest example of extremely dry environments can be seen in Egypt. Bodies have survived with their skin, their hair, their nails, all of that intact for over 4,000 years, which is it's incredible. It's just like drying up the fruit. You take away the moisture, it holds for so much longer. Not only does it make a delicious snack, but you can eat it way past its normal expiration date if it was fresh. I'm not saying to eat the mummies, but yeah, don't eat, don't eat the mummies. Don't do that. There was also more recently the discovery of the Lady of Dai in China, who is considered to be the world's best preserved mummy. Her coffin was packed so airtight, not even moisture could get in. And when they found her in 1971, they could still move her joint, which is super creepy, but also super cool. I'm gonna try a banana. That turned out okay. American Pueblo peoples also buried their dead in dry caves, which was a decision rather than just by chance, meaning we figured it out along the way. It also goes to show that preservation of the dead is a deeply human experience that we all feel the need to do. Makes you think, eh? Oh, it's a crunchy one. Mm. Next on the menu, frozen strawberries. I may need to rethink this plan. Cold, cold preservation. Oh, these are really hard. Mm, they are very frozen. Cold is pretty easy to explain. Can you understand me? I hope so. Oh, it's cold. Cold is pretty easy to explain because you use this type of preservation every day. We refrigerate and freeze almost all of our food to keep it fresh longer. And in super extreme circumstances like the frozen tundra, organic materials can last for tens of thousands of years. Look at the little woolly mammoths we found pretty much intact with even their stomach contents. I'm gonna try one more. We found similar finds with human burials in Siberia, where their skin is so well preserved that we can we can see the tattoos that they adorn themselves with, as well as their clothing and their hairstyles. A bunch more of their other artifacts have also been discovered in excellent condition which gives us so much information about them as a society. What's the trick? Or, uh -huh. One of the most famous ice finds is the Utsi Man, or the Ice Man. He is the world's oldest fully preserved human body, and he is so cool, literally. What we found with him is a perfect glimpse of what would it have been a normal day for him. And because of the preservation state, we can decipher a whole life story about him. He seems to have been hiking in the Alps when he died. He got tattoos and he even had a shoe on him. Tiny one, tiny one. If you're in Toronto, you can actually visit the Bata Shoe Museum where they have a replica of the shoe on display. Some guy actually studied and recreated the shoe and it turns out they were quite warm and toasty. Actually, just visit the Bata Shoe Museum in general. It's super fun and no, it does not smell like feet. I don't know why people always ask me that question. It's not the shoes, it's your feet that stink. Last but certainly not least, we have wet or waterlogged environments. And for that, we've got apricots in pear juice. I don't know why they were preserved in pear juice, but these were the only ones I could find that weren't preserved with sugar. So, bottoms up. 
Oh, that's weird. Wetland archaeology and waterlogged sites actually can preserve a lot more than dryland ones can. We've got swamps, lakes, marshes, bogs, everything like that can essentially seal the organic material in an oxygen-free zone, just like my apricots here. I know I said earlier that wet and damp can actually speed up degeneration, but it takes two to tango, and if there's no oxygen, then bacteria can't grow. It's actually quite good. If the object is waterlogged and left untouched, it can actually survive in this anoxic environment for countless years. If you're looking for any sort of human remains and interaction in an environment, always look in the waterlogged areas. In them you can get linen, textile, wood, leather, plant remains, and yes, also bodies. Obviously the acidity level in these environments plays a factor, but the amount that's preserved is still uncanny. One more. Ever heard of bog bodies? They're essentially the wet mummies of Northern Europe. Their bones and internal organs have essentially disappeared, but the skin remains, as well as the clothing that they were submerged in. Lake dwellings and the immaculate preservation of wood in these environments is super important for dendrochronology, which is the dating system based on tree rings. The only issue we have with these three types of preservation is that once the object is removed from this extreme environment, deterioration begins almost immediately. It's a race against the clock to stabilize and preserve it as best as we can. This is super sensitive with wet preservation and super expensive. I'm making you hungry. You want some? So there you have it, three proven methods to effectively preserve your body for future generations to uncover. Formaldehyde be damned, Mother Nature's got your back. As always, if you want to learn more about preservation of archaeological materials without the chewing sounds, there's a quick write-up and resource list on my website, just follow the link in the description. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, promise I won't eat everything all the time. Stay dirty, my friends.